Bye, Eagles, bye. Last night on Monday Night Football, the Washington Commanders beat the Philadelphia Eagles, the previously undefeated Philadelphia Eagles, to improve to 5-5 five and five on the season and 1-2 and two in the division. The Philadelphia Eagles dropped to 8-1. and one. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs YouTube channel. My name is Greg Sykes. Thank you for joining us. If you're new here, thank you for joining us. And if you're a returning subscriber, also thank you for supporting this channel as well. See, speaking of support, you can support this channel on many different platforms. Um, I also have a Patreon as well. But you can at least subscribe to this channel. I would really appreciate your subscriptions. But with that said, ugh, let's get on to today's video, shall we? So the Washington Commanders pulled off what some felt was an impossible task last night in the link, defeating the Philadelphia Eagles. By the score of 32 to 21. Now, that score is a little misleading because it, it was actually much closer than that. Uh, the Eagles, you know, the desperation laterals at the end of the game, they fumbled it. Uh, Two Hill picked up the fumble and rolled in in the end zone for the final score to make it 32 to 21. Still looks pretty to me. Uh, I'm not going to complain about that one bit, but, uh, you know. It is what it is. The Washington Commanders have beaten the last unbeaten team in the league. And I tell you what, they did exactly what the game plan that I had mentioned in the previous video. You can go back and watch that video just so you know that's what I was talking about. The keys to beating the Philadelphia Eagles. Keeping their high-powered offense off of the field running ball-controlled offense, running the football, running the rock, NFC East pound-to-ground football, right? Ball control. And that is exactly what the Washington Commanders did last night, and they did it in a huge way. I mean, it was probably one of the most lopsided time of possessions I've seen in quite a while. And for the most part, a lot of times this year, I've seen the Washington Commanders on the other end of this because Scott Turner ten, tends to want to get too pass happy. His play calling has been just just terrible this year. Last night, though, I give him props. Let's give Scott Turner props last night. Okay. He played, I mean, he called a great game last night. He did exactly what we were calling for him to do. You know, ground the pound, pass when you need to, get the ball out of Taylor Heineke's hands quickly. Felt like we did that. Now, Heineke, he's going to make his mistakes, and he did last night. There was that one interception that he threw. Um, he was trying to get it to Ter Terry McLaurin, and, of course, he didn't hold the safety long enough. He just kind of dropped back and then quickly threw the pass to McLaurin. You have to hold the safety at least a split second there just enough to make him think, maybe I'm going for the cross route there, and then you hit Terry McLaurin. I think if he would have done that, he would have hit Terry McLaurin. would have been a huge play. He didn't do that. He went right for McLaurin. By the time the ball got there, it was picked off. You know, it, it's just easier said than done, right? Easier said than done. And, of course, you know, the strip sack at the beginning of the game. I tell you what, things started off about as bad as it could get. You know, I, I said in my last video, what Washington needs to do, they need to get the ball first. They did that. But they cannot go three and out. They have to do ball control. Well, they didn't do that. It was a strip sack. Eagles recovered. And then a couple of plays later, they're in the end zone. 
it was probably one of the worst starts that the Washington Commanders could have had against this Eagles team. Luckily, though, on their next drive, they did exactly what they needed to do, and they held the ball for most of that first quarter and went down and scored and tied the game up. Excellent. But the defense was not really doing their job, right? I mean, you know, the Eagles' high-powered offense was just smoking them there in the first half. Came back, scored another quick touchdown, but after that, the defense started stepping up. But it wasn't just it wasn't really the defense. It was really the offense just keeping the Eagles' offense off of the field. You know, playing keep away. And that that is really what Washington needed to do in order to beat the Philadelphia Eagles, and that's what they did last night. You know, we look at the stats here. Taylor Heineke was 17 for 29 for 211 yards, um, averaged uh, 7.3 yards per pass, and had that pick. He was sacked three times. Uh, quarterback rating of 62.4. Now, Brian Robinson really, man, each week I see – more and more improvement out of Brian Robinson Jr. And last night, he really pounded the rock. 26 carries, 86 yards, and that one touchdown where he would not be denied. I mean, he just kept pushing, stretched out, ball crosses the goal line, hits a touchdown. Antonio Gibson ran hard last night as well. He had 14 carries for 44 yards. Curtis Samuel had four carries. Uh, you know, Taylor Heineke... Ran the ball a little bit as well. Terry McLaurin, again, he's your go-to guy. Eight receptions for 128 yards, 16 yards on average. Curtis Samuel had a couple of uh, receiving uh, passes. Diamond Brown had a, a catch. Jahan Dotson had that one catch, and then we didn't see him the rest of the night. Now, I have not <clears throat> watched... Ron Rivera's press conference. So I'm sure it was at. I'm sure it was uh, probably asked by uh, the press about Jahan Dotson. For you who have got to watch that or, or have seen that, um, you could probably tell me in the comments what was up with Dotson. But uh, Dotson had that one catch, and then he didn't play the rest of the game. Antonio Gibson had some catches. Logan Thomas, <coughs> excuse me. Logan Thomas had a couple of catches. Um, yeah, Heineke had that one loss fumble. Um, you know, Tyler Larson, he had that one very bad snap that went way over the head of Taylor Heineke. And Heineke made probably the play of the night with that. Was able to track down the ball, rolled, you know, scrambled out to his left. Was able to throw the ball. He was at he was out of the uh, tackle box, right? So um, he was out of the pocket. He was able to throw the ball back to the line of scrimmage. So it was not intentional grounding. Saved us. Was saved the Commanders probably twenty yards on that. And that was another drive that the Commanders wound up scoring on. I don't know. That might have been the drive that the Commanders, that Brian Robinson scored his TD on. I can't remember. Um, but it was probably the play of the game, honestly. Probably was. I tell you, uh, Sly, let's give some props to Sly, man. A 58-yarder at the end of the first half. 58 yards. And then he came back in the second half with the 55-yarder. Just to stretch the lead out enough to force the Eagles to have to drive for a touchdown, in which they could not do. It was just enough, because we knew that the Eagles were going to come back and, and score quickly, and they did. And it really came down to crunch time. At that point when it was, uh, what was it? I believe it was... 20, what was it, 23 to 22 or something like that. Um, I was 
definitely struggling. <laughs> uh, I think it was 23-21. Um, I, 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 was, I, was, I was thinking, okay, here it is. You know, this is where the Eagles get the ball back because this is right about the time when Taylor Heineke does what he does and then everything, you know, goes south. Luckily, that didn't happen. They stuck to their game plan, and we were able to extend the lead by field goal, and the commanders are victorious over the Philadelphia Eagles. Folks, I will say this. If you've stuck with this video this long, I will, I will tell you this. This game is a changing point of the season for the Washington Commanders. It is not unrealistic to look at this game and say, this team could possibly win out. Yes, that is a stretch. I realize that is a stretch. But you just beat a high-powered, undefeated Philadelphia Eagles squad that is anointed probably to go all the way this year. Or at least to, to get to the NFC e, or the NFC Championship game, and many feel it's going to be a repeat of the Eagles and Vikings from a few years ago in the championship game. So that's what people are looking at. But this may be a point in the season where the Commanders are like, if we can beat the Eagles, we can beat anybody else. Packers beat the Cowboys. You know, we were able to beat the Packers. Why can't we beat the Cowboys? We'll play them at home. We can beat them. Why can't we beat the Giants? We can beat the Giants. You know, why can't we? We'll, we will beat the Texans. You know, the Commanders could possibly win out. If not, they'll at least win. I mean, how many games do we have now? We're, we're, um, we're five and five. Seven games left. So, you know, if they're able to win five of those seven games... You know, that may be enough to get them into the playoffs. Playoffs? Am I talking playoffs? Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.